This is Fortune Buchholz of NotFortunesFool.com, and as I have promised, I wanted to make my follow-up video answering some questions about Chiro Marchetti's Fin de Siècle Kipper deck. So most of the questions that I've received as follow-up have been about using timing in practice. And so I just wanted to do a quick square of nine for you to show you how timing can be determined in a practical manner and also acknowledging something that's often unique to the Kipper, and that is when the client's time frame is dependent on someone else's time frame. This happens a lot in the Kipper, and I just wanted to show you in a practical example how that came to be. I also wanted, of course, to continue to thank you for your endless support and your positive vibes. I really gain a lot of energy from them, and I'm so encouraged by them. I'm very grateful that everyone has been so supportive and positive about Chiro's deck and the videos that I have made for it. This will make probably more than eight and a half hours of video in English about Chiro's Kipper deck. So even if you don't have it right now, as you know, it is coming out in a commercial version in June during the summer. So you be, will be able to get a, a, a nice and easily affordable you know, a commercial version, and then you can, you know, watch all my videos, take notes, or already have some notes in place so that you can begin, you know, reading with some knowledge right from the start and reduce your learning curve. So that said, I'm going to make this video like I make many of my other uh, spread videos where I'm just going to stop the video, pop up a static picture, and then just, you know, talk over and explain you know, what I'm doing in this square of nine with a timing example. So uh, I hope you like that and welcome to my porch. As you can see, it's kind of a crazy day because of the, um, you know, endless tree trimming that's been happening around me. I have nothing but chainsaws around me for the past like week, it seems like. So forgive me for using my headset uh, to make this video, but I did want to make sure that you got good audio. So that aside, um, I'll just pop up the static picture and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hi, beautiful people. So here we are on the other side, the static portion of this timing video. So um, as you see here, we have a square of nine. If you are unfamiliar with the manner in which I read the square of nine, please go over to my playlist for the Cheer Mark Kitty Kipper on YouTube or on my Facebook page, and you can go find my square of nine uh, video there for the full details. Uh, of course, as I always say, there is no Kipper dictator. There is no one way or one right way to read the Kipper, right? There's some general practices that we have, you know, from the German practice. But, of course, it's natural that you may customize them or fit them to see what works for you. Reading is a practice, and so you may end up doing it a little differently or customizing the meanings or the procedures for yourself, right? And that's perfectly okay. In fact, that's how it's supposed to work, right? But as long as we're in the general tradition and we don't go too far afield or start to read the Kipper as you would read tarot or, you know, get all kind of, you know, in outer space about it, you're going to be good. So uh, first of all, let me just describe the cards to you. If you want, you can stop the video right here, look at the cards on the screen, and then lay them out for yourself, or you can listen to me describe the cards just so you can see them clearly and know what they are clearly, and then stop the video, lay them out for yourself, and then continue, whatever works for you. So the top row here in Chiro's deck is Kipper 28, which he calls Expectation. Kipper 22, which I call the official or the military officer or the field marshal, which he calls the official person. Then we have Kipper Four, uh, you know, courtship, right? Or, you know, then we have um, Kipper 34 on the second row, uh, what he calls occupation. Kipper Eight, which he calls marriage. And then we have at the end of the second row, Kipper 30, adjudication, which I call, you know, magistrate, right? Then on the bottom row, we have, starting here on the right, we have the main female. Then the center is card 29, Gefangus or prison, which he calls imprisonment. And the final card is 21, uh, family room or Wohenzimmer, 
right? Or living room or, you know. Uh, anyway, so those are the cards and the layout, right? As we go from, from left to right in the three rows. So uh, there we are. Now uh, let's go ahead and describe sort of the background uh, of this reading. As always, you know, I camouflage everything and alter it slightly for reasons of confidentiality, right? We never want to betray the trust of our clients, but it is always beneficial to use real life examples and nothing that's too forced or made up. So this is the practice that I've always done and, and I'm very grateful for that so that my sitters allow that. So let's go ahead and um, start by uh, just, as I said, describing the background situation. So this is a lady, as you can see, there she is in the third row, right, on the lower left-hand side. She is the main female, the Haupt Personen, and she's an executive who has recently had an important job interview, and she's waiting to hear back right? What is the outcome of her recent job interview? So the purpose of this particular spread, right, is to show how, because she's not really the decision maker in when she's going to hear back, right? She's already given a great interview. She's already given it her best shot. And so now the, the power is partially in someone else's hands, right? So she has to wait for the senior executive who is the decision maker, right? And, um, you know, she just has to kind of see how that's going to play out and then see what options she may have to either help that along or not. So let's just go ahead and, and talk about, you know, how the timing works here when someone else is in control. So let's go ahead and very quickly start by reading the corners. So as you see, we have uh, on the upper left hand side, we have card 28, expectation. This is sometimes, as you know, called three months wait. And then we have here the, the family room or the living room, card 21, right? And this means something that's close to you, something that's near to you. Often we say it's something that happens in about a month time frame. So right away, we've got two different time frames sort of established here when we look at the cards from a time meaning. But if we look at this, you know, uh, from just a, you know, straight, context-related business meaning, right? We're looking at her work question, and so we're going to read the cards, since they are multivalent, in the context of her business question, right? We can see that she is waiting for something close to her, something near to her, you know, something that's very dear to her heart, something that's very personal, which, of course, would be her next job, right? And she puts a lot of you know, personal emphasis and gets a lot of personal self-regard from her career success. So this is clearly something that's very important to her. It's very deep-seated to her. And of course, naturally, it would have a huge impact on her family, right? So then let's go ahead and look at the other two corners, right? So we can look at the corners with the, uh, you know, main female as the woman herself and card number four, courtship, which is in fact the actual interview because courtship can also mean a meeting. And in this context, seriously, it means, you know, a business meeting. So since the question is about the outcome of the interview and about a work contract, which is a contractual relationship, you can see that the center of the card is marriage. And that's the card that I've chosen as the focus card and not the lady, because her question is about the work contract. When she will hear back if she's got the job, right? So that's why that card is in the center and why I chose that instead of making the center card uh, the hoped person or the, or the main female, just so you know that. All right, so this seems all very pertinent and on target, and we've looked at the cards from, from two perspectives. We've read them literally together for their keywords, but we've also looked at those corner cards from a time perspective, and we can see we have two different time perspectives. So it may seem at first that it's a little confusing, right? But let's go ahead and read the diamond around the center card, pairing the cards diagonally in the usual way, and then we'll see what's going on with this contract and how we can resolve this timing issue. So we can see we have the official person and she immediately identifies him as the uh, CEO, uh, the head of the panel with whom she interviewed. He will be the final you know, decider as to which of the three candidates will be accepted and hired. So um, you know, then we have uh, card 34, right, as the diagonal uh, 
following that, and that is, of course, occupation. This is her job. This is her labor of love. Uh, you know, this is not a case of manual work here, but this is really her vocation. This is what she feels strongly about. She loves her career. She loves her career path. She loves the industry that she's in. It's really what she's poured her heart into. So Chiro's uh, understanding of card 34, uh, occupation, is really very pertinent here, right? And then uh, we have here a very interesting card, and that is card 29, prison or imprisonment, right? When we come to a time perspective, this means something that's stuck or stopped indefinitely, right? She feels stuck because she hasn't heard, right? But there's also this question of the CEO himself being stuck, right? He's he's not making a decision at the moment, and that's why she hasn't heard, right? So if we go on to card 29, then we go up to adjudication, card 30, the magistrate. The magistrate is someone who makes a decision, or it's the decision itself, right? So here, when we read these four cards, you know, in the diamond, we clearly see the situation is that the CEO is stuck, and he himself has not made a decision, Okay, so we can see here that she's waiting for something she had expected to happen rel relatively quickly. She hasn't heard, and she hasn't heard because the CEO is, you know, stuck, and he's got an issue, right? So if we look then at the center column, which tends to stand for the present situation in the square of nine, we see the CEO right, at, at top, card 22. He's the guy who's above the contract. Remember, cards that are above in the Kipper tend to be what's in control of a situation or what's on a person's mind. So since the center card here is not a person card, we don't understand it just to be what's on the person's mind. Rather, we understand the situation that is in control or the person who is in control of card eight, the contract, and that would again be the CEO. And again, we see reading down 29, he's stuck. He too is frozen. He's on hold. He's waiting for something, some other decision. So he may be dependent on the rest of the panel. He may have a budget issue. He may have some kind of emergency, but this is the situation, right? She hasn't heard because the CEO is not in a moment in the position to make a decision. So um, let's go ahead then and move forward to the far right column, right? This is the column that we tend to identify with the tendency towards outcome. I'm not going to say it's the future and I'm not going to say it's a prediction because as you know, I don't tell fortunes and I don't offer predictions, right? Um, people always have free will. Sitters always have free will. And if she does nothing, there's a tendency for this situation to come out as we would see on the far right column. But of course, she can always take action to change that, alter that, or do whatever she likes. The CEO also has free will, right? So we just look at the kipper and we we want to sort of look at everyone's situation and then take a look at, you know, what options we might offer her, right, to either speed the process along or, you know, not, whether waiting or action is the best course for her. And that's something, of course, that she will know best about her life and sh that she will see herself looking at the cards, since the cards, of course, are a mirror of her language, they're a mirror of her consciousness, and they're a way for her to make her situation objective to herself so she doesn't have to suffer the burden of anxiety, right? This is how uh, we approach the kipper here. So we can see that the, the far right column, right, the tendency of outcome is that the meeting, right, will lead to a decision so card number four, right, will lead to a decision, card 30, right, and it will be soon, 21, within a month, right? So that, the future, like, looks good, right? So if she just hangs tight, right, she should hear about this decision, you know, in a month, Right, And since she feels very strongly that she aced this interview, then we would expect that the decision would probably be good. But, you know, she's not ultimately in control. The CEO is the guy who's ultimately in control, card number 22. So, you know, that is her, you know, that is her situation. And that's how we resolve the timing in this, you know, understanding of how to use timing in a practical way. So... We would say that after he makes the decision, she should hear within a month, 
right? The question is, is how long will he need to make the decision? So, you know, one of the things that we can do in the Kippur as we do, um, you know, in the Lenormand, right, is we can pick the cards up and move them. And I like to do this, although some people get upset when you say the term mirroring. I do it and I find it helpful and my clients uh, find it helpful. And it is a traditional technique that other decks, such as the Kipper, you know, do use and you can find in the original and old instructions of many of the games which are related, um, you know, to the Kipper and to the Lenormand, these parlor, these parlor type games. It's also commonly used in, in playing card cartomancy, which shares, you know, many features with the way the Germans read these cards. And if anyone wants to dispute that, then they can go to the German National Playing Card Museum themselves and read the actual original instructions of the 19th century cards themselves and look at the actual 19th century uh, playing card books and they can see what kinds of techniques were in use and what kinds weren't. Um, so that's just, you know, that's just the fact of the history, right? But of course you may do whatever you want. So I'm going to pick up the main female and I'm going to put it on the top. You know, I'm just going to pick it up and move it to the top left hand and I'm going to pick up imprisonment and put it above the official person. And I'm going to pick up family room and I'm going to, uh, put it on the upper left hand above courtship. So what we've done basically is we have rearranged, uh, the the square of nine so that the contract is no longer in the center, but the CEO is now the center. And we're going to kind of look at things from his point of view. We're un trying to understand the, his time frame, right? So if we reread this situation, right, we can see that, again, look at the corners, right? There's a woman that is our sitter who, the interviewee, right? And he needs to make a decision about her, right? And if then we go and we look at the other corner, again, it's a job decision. It's about her occupation, job, card 34, and family room. He would like to make it within a month, Okay, so right now, we're looking again at this month time frame. He's frozen right now, but he would like to make the decision within a month. So this suggests that she will hear something uh, about the decision, you know, from a month, and that she can, you know, expect to wait for a month, you know, so that's good. So she has two options here, right? She can either wait the month or so, you know, at living room is somewhat, uh, sometimes a month, sometimes six weeks, but sometimes at that time she can just hang out and wait, you know, with good chances. So that's the option prevented, presented by the first row, if we read those cards horizontally, right? So we can see that she, if we look at the row as w her one option, we can see that this first row is main female or card two, card 20 imprisonment, and card, you know, 21 family room. So she can just hang out and wait, which is cool. You know, waiting is good. Or her second option would be the middle row, right? And that is she could ask for another meeting, right? So we can see that as 28, expectation or waiting, right? Uh, card 22, that would be the CEO. And then card four, right, would be another meeting. So she could either, you know, hang cool and then wait to hear, or she could ask for a follow-up interview or a follow-up meeting, right? So that's for her to decide, to weigh the pros and cons. She knows the situation best, right? Um, I would say, you know, if I were looking at the situation just, you know, objectively, right? If we look at that third row, which shows uh, 34, occupation, Eight would stand for the contract or, you know, the partnership. And card 30 would be the decision. So I tend to think the decision will be in her favor based on that last row. And hanging tight will be okay for her. Right? So that would be what, if I were looking at the spread for myself, what I would do. But of course, naturally, you know, she has to make her own decision between the options the cards present to her and, you know, weigh out the pros and cons for herself because she actually knows the situation best. So, um, in fact, you know, what happened was she did decide to um, wait. She wrote a follow-up email saying how eager she was to, you know, take the job and to offer 
kind of like more thoughts as to how she would perform this job. And she did within about five weeks then, you know, hear that she was hired. So this worked out great for her. But I hope this also shows the different ways that we look at conflicting timing cards and how we resolve, you know, various timing cards, uh, not only for what the from the sitter's perspective, but also from other people's perspective, right? The case where she has to wait for someone else to act before her timing can come true, right? So, you know, he had to do his own thing for, you know, about a month, and then she, you know, within a couple of weeks after that, you know, five to six weeks, heard back from him. So, you know, that all worked out. Now, since I think the square of nine in general as a layout sort of stands for one to three months, all of this took place appropriately within the kind of time frame I would expect from the square of nine. So I love this consistency of this particular um, you know, reading, and I think it really worked for her. I hope that this uh, explains to you quickly, but somewhat thoroughly, how, uh, you know, I balance the different timing considerations from different perspectives, you know, uh, in these kinds of layouts. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on social media. You know, I'm always happy to follow up and answer any questions that you may have. Also, if there are any other questions you have about timing or any other aspects of the Kipper or the Lenormand or the two mixed together, right? Please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always interested in making more videos for you, particularly as the commercial release of the deck approaches. So, um, you know, just go ahead and submit your questions, submit your comments. I'm very happy, uh, again, for everyone's support and for everyone's interest, and I hope to make another video for you very soon. I will be traveling to Serbia towards the end of May, so if I make any more videos, it probably would be before I went to Serbia, say in the middle of May. So if you would like to contribute a question or a comment towards a new video, please do maybe try to get it to me in the next week or so, which would be like the first week of May. And uh, then that will give me kind of the time to put everything together and make a video for you. So I hope that helps. Thanks so much. And until I speak to you again, enjoy your cards.